So going by the title, you must be like, why so expensive, right? Well, wait till the end of the video and see if you feel the same way. So welcome to my channel and this is how I made my first 1000 in woodworking. So the build started with some really nice walnut slabs I had and the client wanted something with oak and walnut. We went back and forth and they liked this design and the play on various thicknesses of the tabletop between the top and the bottom and also the size of the chunky legs. I feel though the brass inlays kind of sealed the deal. So now the client was expecting a simple book matched walnut top and bottom based on the renders, right? But I took a gamble on the top and made it an epoxy walnut top as the living room where this is going has an epoxy coffee table. So this end table would complement the look and in the end, the client was very happy with the surprise. Sometimes gambles do pay off. Not always, sometimes. I milled up four blocks of red oak that were one and a three quarter inch to cut out the legs from. Remember the template I was talking about? Well, I have that for free on my printables page. If you have a 3D printer, you can get this exact template done. Also on my printables page, there is a PDF. So if you don't have a 3D printer, you can just print the cutout guide and make these using a bandsaw. And you know, a little bit sanding and finishing. Now I will get a router table at some point, but for now I had to plunge cut the top side using the template guide and I held it in place using the tape and quick glue method. Then I used a flush trim bit to come from the other side and used the top side as a guide to cut out the shape. This worked really well, so I repeated it three more times for the other legs. Now for that soft look, I went with rounding all the visible edges of these legs with a 3 8 inch round over bit and then lightly sanded the burn marks left by the router. So I decided to use some Z clips to mount the tabletop and the bottom because this will allow the wood to move over time and also the disassembly will be very simple. I also cut out the channels for those on my miter saw with the depth stop. That was done off camera though, but the inlays, however, I used a table saw and I set it to a depth to half of the round of the 3 16th rod that was going in so that it would be a little bit exposed while still be buried enough to be intact in place. So it was finally time to stain. I went with a general finish water-based black pigment. I tried this on a test piece first and was happy with the result. So using a foam brush, I worked this into the wood and the client also wanted the wood pattern to show through, so oak was perfect choice. The varathane finish that I used on my previous video was actually really bad. It was an oil-based finish, so longer time to cure. Also, the smell was very strong. This one, however, is great to work with. I applied two coats of them. One was a soaking coat, and then the other one was a finish coat, and it turned out to be perfect. Now, while that was drying, I got to working on the bottom base. And this one, I just planed both sides and then bookmatched the wood glue for the top. I had a few knots that I had to fill out, but I used some Starbond black glue and then some accelerator. I used 800, 1000, 1500 and 2000 grit sandpaper. And then at the end, mother's aluminum polish to really make this brass pop. So by day three, the epoxy was fully cured and I worked on flattening the slabs with my router sled. This was not too bad as I had only like an eighth of an inch to take from both of the side to make this flat. And then I added like a quarter inch round over on both the faces. And now it was time to sand the top. Same as the bottom plate, I went through the sanding progressions with water popping. And this time I'm trying out Rubio Monaco. Now the last table I did, I did use Osmo 3043 oil and the finishing process took way longer to get my desired finish. But on Rubio, there were a few differences I noticed right away. You have to send up to 180 as opposed to the 240 on the Osmo process. And overall, it took me only two coats to get the desired finish and Rubio took me three to four, which again is a time saver considering you're just spending most of your time waiting for the finish to dry. So for me, Rubio is a win for epoxy tabletops. So this is me after the first coat dried and coming back and buffing in the second one in. This achieved the satin spray look I wanted. Now I did drill the holes for where the Z clips are going to be mounted and did a dry fit to see if everything was going to come together nicely. After which I moved to install the brass inlays with the grooves I made for the feet. I used some black Starbond glue again to do this and the accelerator helped 
setting it in position. I then came back with a finish to touch up any spots that were looking dull or any squeeze out reactions of the glue that discolored the finish. And the final step to this was adding some ceramic coating on the table top and the bottom. Now this gives a little bit of an extra bit of protection layer from any water or spills that could happen. And to me, this is worth the value in what I was charging for the client. So we're almost at the end of the video. So do you think this is worth to charge the client $1,000 for or not? If you like the effort I put into this video, then please consider subscribing and sharing this video. That way you can tell your friends what $1,000 can get you. So finally, the assembly came together very nicely. I did this indoors because all of the pieces were finished and this is just me assembling it on my coffee table. So with the last coat of the ceramic and letting it dry, I call this project done. Here's some B-roll of what the project came out to look like. Now if you made it this far, thank you and comment below 1500 as that is what the client paid me in the end as she was really happy with the piece and I will know you were a true fan. So I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.